You know, it is hot and it may be tempting to bring your family, including your dog, to the closest body of water. Yeah, but there are some lurking hazards to be aware of before you head out into the great outdoors with your fur babies. Joining us live this morning to help keep them cool and safe this summer is Dr. Jason Nicholas with Preventive Vet. Good morning, Dr. J. Good morning, Emily and Jenny. How are you all doing? Good. How about yourself? Doing very well, thank you. Yeah, so I know we're, we're getting into uh, the, the dog days of summer, you know, as we as we call them. And I know we've uh, we've seen a lot of people out and about, and I've been starting to hear from some fellow dog owners that they are seeing some algae in ponds and lakes. Uh, we start to see some scummy stuff this time of year. Um, is that a danger for some of our pups? Yeah, actually, a really big danger for our pups and for ourselves, really, um, especially the some of the blue green algae species. Um, which are growing on, you know, even backyard ponds and even in slow moving rivers and streams and such um, can cause some pretty severe neurologic central nervous system and or liver damage in our in our pets. Oh, mm. wow. So I, I know we've had reports about these uh, issues sometimes in the news, but how can pet owners, you know, stay up to date with uh, any algae threats that might be out there? Yeah, so I mean, the first thing is really just keep a close eye on any water that your dog is around. Um, it, it doesn't always, it isn't always terribly obvious, like a really thick green sort of scum on the top, but um, sometimes it is. Uh, but even if there's not a ton on the top, it can still cause a lot of problems. Um, and then also you could check the Oregon Health Authority. They've got a, um, a harmful algae bloom monitoring page and then there's this really cool app for both um, iPhones and Android phones called Bloom Watch and that allows you to kind of share pictures and sightings of blooms and see where other people are reporting so it really is crowdsourced to help people keep an eye on these things and avoid these problems huh. um, but the biggest thing is recognizing what they look like and then keeping your pets out. Yeah, so I, I know you know we've heard these stories. It is so sad sometimes dog owners who run into this out uh, in the outdoors because some of these things can happen so quickly if their dog has been out yeah. in the lake. It, sometimes they don't even have time to get them to the vet. So are there any symptoms or things that people should be watching for? Yeah, so and the symptoms can come on quite quickly. You're right. Um, you know, really things like staggering, walking like they're drunk, we call it ataxia. That's because it's affecting the central nervous system. Um, vomiting, sometimes even their eyes rolling to the back of their head, collapse, seizures, things of that nature. If your dog gets into this stuff, like let's say that they jump into a pond and you don't realize that there's a problem, try and rinse them off, hose them off with fresh water. Um, and if you can use uh, a shampoo, that's great. That can help get it off because it's not just a matter of them drinking it from the pond or, or swallowing it while they're swimming. Even if they lick it off their fur afterwards, it can cause problems. So those are the signs you want to look for, and that's what you want to do if they inadvertently get in. But then also get them to your vet ASAP, because really um, trying to decontaminate them or start to treat and support them with these problems is of, of the utmost importance. Yeah, um, you know, uh, in our area, uh, stand-up paddle boarding, uh, canoeing, all very popular. And I have seen dogs out on a <laughs> stand-up paddle board. So, so what are your thoughts on that? I think it's fantastic. If your dog is acclimated to it, and, and there are some cats that can actually do this stuff as well, by the way, <laughs> um, but, but they've got to be acclimated to it and you've got to do it safely. Um, obviously, you know, start them slow and then make sure that they're wearing a PFD, a personal flotation device, or maybe we could call them pet flotation devices. Um, there's actually a great company locally, uh, you know, in, in Oregon in Bend called Roughwear, and they make some of the best uh, doggy life jackets um, and I think cat life jackets as well. Huh. Um, but, you know, you can you can check these things out at REI and other places. But uh, but a, a life jacket is of the utmost importance and starting them slowly and acclimating them is, is uh, very important as well. Okay. Even if they've got the doggy paddle down, it's definitely <laughs> good to have some support. And I know you mentioned, uh, you know, bathing them more regularly, especially if you think there's a problem. But should that kind of be the routine for any time you have an outdoor day? Yeah, I mean, depending on what they're in and what they're swimming in and such, but I also want to caution people to be really careful, especially if your dog has, say, long fur or they're prone to, say, skin allergies. You want to make sure after swimming or bathing, make sure to clean and dry their ears really well. And we've got an article on the website at preventivet.com on how to do that and what to use and what not to use. But also make sure to bathe them and dry their coat really well to prevent or minimize the chances of what we call hot spots, which can be very painful and distressing for your pets. Um, and problematic as well. 
Yeah, okay. Dr. J, thanks as always for the advice to keep everybody having fun this summer. And hey, you know, uh, we know pet owners might have even more questions. So coming up a little this, a little bit later this morning, Dr. J is going to be back uh, for our Ask a Vet Facebook Live Q&A. So if you have any pet questions that you want Dr. J to answer, uh, tune in, join us on our Coin Museum Extra Facebook page.